Okay, so uh, a little bit about the uh, micro adoption. Um, I have one slide for this talk in here quite quickly. Uh, my slides are on the slideshow already, so you can have it there if you uh, want to follow along. Um, I uh, want to talk a brief introduction about the MySQL for programmability. Everybody knows that uh, since MySQL 5.0, you can have uh, existing stored modules, stored routines, and you've been always been able to uh, use uh, MySQL using defined functions. And with this, uh, uh, you can you know, uh, program uh, uh, the way it might well behave to some extent. Um, so, um, who's using stock procedures? Okay, a few people. Um, I, I, I guess the, the main feature of this is that it's standard uh, syntax. Uh, you can use it to build scalar functions, procedures, and triggers. They're sort of the dictionary and they're being interpreted once you execute them. Um, then you can do yes, they do define functions. Um, those are typically uh, uh, external binary libraries, which are simply linked uh, into the data dictionary. Um, and you can use those to build scalar and aggregate functions. Uh, so not, not just scalar, but also aggregates. Um, and those are compiled data codes, so uh, in other words, really fast. Um, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a UDF, or a bunch of UDFs actually that I created, which allow you to uh, use uh, Google's V8 JavaScript engine to execute JavaScript inside the database, or at, at least within uh, as part of your SQL stages. Um, uh, well, probably um, uh, everybody knows uh, Google's V8. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very, uh, very fast uh, JavaScript engine. Uh, very optimized and it works by um, compiling the JavaScript to native code uh, just in time, which means that it's, uh, it's, it's a really uh, fast JavaScript engine. So uh, many people might ask themselves uh, rightly so, why would you want to uh, use JavaScript inside your database? Why would you want to use uh, or, or mix uh, JavaScript with SQL? So uh, that's a good question because uh, I didn't really think about this as a useful item uh, at first. It started for me as uh, an example. I was doing a presentation about UDFs, and I wanted to create an example which was non-trivial, non-trivial uh, UDF which uses an external library, and I thought it would be nice to use this JavaScript thing. And it was kind of inspired by Henry Eno's work on Bizzle, uh, where, where he created a UDF or a function, a JS function, which allows you to evaluate little uh, Java scriptlets. Um, and I thought it was, it was like a nice game, but not very useful. Um, uh, it, it's convenient if you want to manipulate the JSON blobs and uh, different stuff, although I doubt that it's really a good, good use for it. Um, one of the things that's pretty neat is that um, in some cases, um, the JavaScript uh, stuff turns out to be uh, very much faster than stored routines. And this was for me the motivation to, uh, to, uh, to delve deeper into this and to try and develop a real project out of it. And uh, now it's time to like, uh, just show you the example I'm talking about. Um, what I've got here is, here's a function, stored routine, which calculates Easter day. So what happens is you shove in the date time, and then this will return the day in which, in this particular year, uh, the Easter day will, will fall. This is a useful, you know, useful function in case uh, you want to do data warehousing, because when you have Easter day, you can calculate a lot of the Christian holidays from just Easter day, so it's, it's a useful thing. And it's not a real um, algorithm. Uh, I, I got this out of Wikipedia, and I created the MySQL version of this. And as you can see, if I just uh, run it, Easter day, for this year, and this is different. So, now, the thing is, um, when you start to benchmark this thing, so I'm just gonna execute years a day a million times, and we're waiting. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, because, you know, it takes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complex computation, and it uh, takes the mice of quite a bit of time to do this inside the procedure. It actually takes about 20 seconds, it should be there, so 18, 44, quite a long time. People could say, well, we can do, we don't really need the procedure to do this, we can do the same thing with just pure SQL, this is true. So here's the, the, the pure SQL example. 
And although it's a little bit faster, it has not an advantage, which is that the code is very long. <laughs> so nobody really wants to deal with this kind of code. Um, and you can see that it still takes seven seconds. So it's like only twice, maybe twice as good as the procedure is on. And now for the JavaScript one. Um, I should first prove that the JavaScript example uh, returns the same uh, result. So here we have the JavaScript. So we can see that this is the result coming out of it. Same result as for the for procedure. And this is the code. So it's the same algorithm, exactly the same, exactly the same example as the for procedure. Um, the, the code is hairy, I admit, but um, the important thing now is that you can see that it delivers the same result. Now if we do the benchmark for this example, so again a million times, but then the JavaScript example. Still takes some time, but at least now we're back in four seconds, which is faster than the pure code. This was a surprise to me, because uh, you know, normally uh, expressions as well are, are quite quick. Everybody knows that sort of procedures are quite slow, uh, but that the JavaScript uh, example, dragging in the entire V8 and running a, a program uh, that way it would be faster, I didn't expect that. So this was the motivation for me to, uh, to explore this further and to see if we could, could do something with it, because I mean, I, I admit that uh, usually when you're doing database work, it's all about queries and not so much about computation. But if you do need some computation, you need it a lot, then maybe this might be uh, a, a sweet spot. And this might be uh, a good use case for this particular uh, JavaScript solution. OK, so back to the presentation. This is the result we just, uh, we just saw. So the JavaScript is, is uh, well, at least twice as fast as the QS version. Um, so, uh, the project I created is MySQL uh, VA 2 yes. It's on GitHub. You can uh, fork it there. You can do whatever you like with it. I don't think uh, the, the, the license is you know, free. You can do whatever you want with it. And it offers a couple of things. It offers um, uh, three scatter functions. Um, the JS is what we saw already. Just execute the scriptlet. JS UDF, I will talk about this in detail later on. Uh, JS error is just utility so that you can find the uh, uh, syntax errors in your JavaScript scripts. Uh, JS hack is um, an aggregate function. I'll talk about that in more detail later on. And uh, there's a, a plugin, uh, a demon plugin, which uh, uh, keeps hold of the V8 engine and uh, uh, offers you some statistics and some variables. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you right now. So the, the, the demon plugin doesn't do much. It's just a placeholder for the entire uh, project for the UDS. And it keeps track of some globals. And you can, uh, um, well, you can configure it with uh, one variable, uh, the JS demon module block. This is useful. Um, later on, I I'm going to show you how you can reuse um, uh, the, the script file and re reuse it over and over again so that you have an actual stored module. And uh, for safety reasons, you need to um, uh, constrict the, uh, the directory where to load these files from. This is where this variable is for. And then you've got a bunch of status variables, and those are just the uh, instrumentation of the V8 engine. So they just pull off uh, uh, you know, information about memory usage and that kind of stuff. Uh, I haven't found uh, a real usage for those, uh, for those numbers. But uh, it seems like a good idea to, to, uh, to expose them anyway. Um, so that's all I'm going to talk about the human plugin. Now I'm just going to talk all, uh, more about uh, the actual uh, UDFs. First, the JS UDF. We will be already saw it, but we used for the for the Easter Day example. Um, what the, all these UDFs do is they always take as the first argument the script. And the script must be a, a minus of three which uh, uh, it forms a valid JavaScript program. And then there's an optional uh, collection of arguments, as many as you like, and those arguments will be exposed inside the script. So you can use them and refer to those arguments inside the JavaScript program. Return value will be uh, the expression of the last JavaScript expression in the script. And for return it as a string, so if you, if you, need, uh, you, know, if you need a number of value, whatever, you still have to cross off on the MySQL side. Um, and um, 
Yeah, so there's a few more features. If the script is a constant string, then it will be compiled once and executed over and over and over each row of your statement. Uh, on the other hand, if your script is dynamic, so if you, for example, if you have a table with a script column, then it will uh, you know, compile and execute for each row, obviously, because otherwise it wouldn't be uh, possible to execute this. Um, I, I'll just show a the piece of the example was a little, a little bit convoluted. I'll just show a real simple example to show you how the JS uh, uh, function works. So again, we have uh, JS. The script is the piece over here. And we're saying arguments 0 plus arguments 1. And these uh, um, refer to the actual arguments that we're passing here. So this is just to simply uh, add the two arguments according to the we get we get the output tree as a string. So we still have to pass it in my source side to the to number of the So that's that's all for um, uh, the JS um, uh, UDF. The more interesting examples are the JS UDF and JS tag. Because uh, who has ever written uh, MySQL UDF? Okay, not many people. Um, um, there's a reason for that because uh, running UDF is hairy. You have to write C or C++ code or at least some other binary uh, compiled code, and uh, you can uh, crash your server if you if you, you know if you make the wrong if you make a mistake here there. Uh, so it's an unsafe and it can be hard. Um, the thing you should know about is that the, the UDF interface is um, myself offers you a couple of callbacks. Uh, so uh, when you run your UDF, MySQL will call a couple of predefined functions inside your uh, UDF code uh, to manual various phases of the execution of the SQL statement in which you are using that function. And what I did with uh, uh, this, uh, these particular functions, JS UDF and JS Act, is I mapped uh, the UDF interface onto JavaScript so that you can script the UDF interface. Um, I, I hope this will be clear in a moment when I show the, the example. Uh, there's a few uh, differences with respect to the uh, JS uh, function I mentioned earlier. Uh, in both these cases, the script argument has to be static. Uh, it will be compiled only once in the initialization phase of the UDF, and it will be reused over and over for each row that the UDF is called. So if you want any dynamic effect uh, with these uh, particular uh, uh, functions, then you will have to uh, code that to the arguments. The script must be static in this particular case. Yeah. And you will get a runtime error uh, when you try to uh, uh, execute this with a dynamic script. Um, yeah, and uh, I always said that the, the, the callbacks of the uh, predefined by MySQL to the edit phase are being mapped onto the JavaScript environment. Uh, and uh, as well as the uh, various data sources which you need to uh, do your UDS. So um, how it works is uh, we have the um, JSGDF um, signature. Again, we use the script. Again, we have the, uh, the also arguments. Um, inside, uh, when this is run, then the, the uh, uh, this script here can optionally define a PA function, which will be called uh, only once before the entire statement is executed. And you can use this to set up the variables, acquire resources, that kind of stuff. And then after that, for each row, um, the UDF um, uh, callback will be called, and the result will be returned as the row result for this particular function. And finally, after all the rows have been uh, executed, uh, have been processed, you, uh, you'll get an optional code for the DEN function where you can free your resources. So here is the same thing the flow diagram. We go to init. Uh, UDF is called. If there are more rows, then we will call the UDF again and again and again. If the other rows are gone, and then finally we, uh, we enter the DEN um, um, a callback, and then the second row is then. Um, so just to show you how this works is, I have a, a little um, example here, and what this does is this this takes the Sakita uh, payment uh, table, and it uh, calculates the running total. It's not very useful, it's interesting to show you how it works. And um, before I'm going to run this, I want to show you that right here, um, I have the, the error uh, of my scroll. I'm painting it so that you can see what's going on. Now if we go back and we execute this example. So, um, yeah, so let me explain the function. 
Jimmy, um, in this, this is, will be called the head uh, before any version process. And what I'm doing is first I'm going to uh, use the built-in uh, console.info uh, uh, function. So this is a, 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 a an, an, uh, console object uh, uh, and the info method is something that's provided by the by my plugin, by the JS plugin, uh, and allows you to write an error log. Um, and uh, what we're also doing is we're initializing the total uh, global variable to zero. Then we get a new DF function, which uh, gets one argument. We're working that again, and uh, we're adding that to the total. And then finally, in the unit, we just mark that, that we got it, just to show you how this comes to work. And if I execute it, then you can see that um, we get the amount 299, and then again 299, so this is a <coughs> 399, so we add 399 to it, so we get a run total uh, for this for this, uh, for this UDF. And if you look in the law, then you can see that every phase of the, of the execution has been uh, walked to the error log. So this is one of the um, um, features of the JavaScript environment that you get with, with uh, the JGDS. And you can write to the error log via, via the console.info.error and not log. So very analogous to what you have in the modern browsers, um, where you uh, can also use the console.log uh, you know, and friends to uh, write to the JavaScript console. Okay, um, yeah, so I want to have a word about the arguments, argument processing. Uh, in the JS uh, uh, function, uh, you only have the argument values, but in the JS UDF, in the JS Act um, uh, functions, uh, you can actually uh, get metadata about your arguments as well. Um, and this is done via a global uh, arguments array. And you can use this to uh, verify uh, and uh, validate the arguments in your init function. Uh, and you know you can use that to, to abort uh, the entire statement in case your function doesn't get the arguments that it expects. Um, there's, a, there's a little snack here, uh, because the arguments array, uh, the global arguments array, is where I store the JavaScript rep representation of the minus you know, uh, arguments uh, object that, that you can pass plus the UDF. Um, inside uh, these the, the values of those arguments will be passed to the UDF uh, callback. But you can always uh, refer to the global uh, arguments array inside the function using this of arguments. Well let me just uh, run the example to show you how it works. Um, so here's a simple example again. What this does is uh, we have uh, JS UDF, uh, no init, no init, only the UDF callback. And what this does is uh, this will um, take this of arguments, which refers to this one to the global argument error, which I filled inside the JavaScript environment with the, the MySQL uh, UDF argument. And uh, we're using a built-in JSON with Springify to uh, make a, a, a string representation of this object. And um, we're passing a couple of different arguments. We're passing the string with the value of string. We're passing the value of five. Um, and we're indexing that with, with, uh, uh, with real. Um, and we're pushing in an integer and we're pushing in a, 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 a decimal uh, number. So if I execute this, then the result is that we get back to JSON area. And here you can see that every argument here uh, is described with name, type, maximum length, maybe all constant item of value. And obviously, you can use this information inside the init function to check uh, the value, to check you know, the, the, the boundaries of your, of your function you call. Um, everybody that has written new apps uh, will be familiar with this, this item because they are exactly, uh, they are exactly mapped to the, the uh, fields in the MySQL structs which are designed to pass arguments to the And um, these are actually rewrites. So you can inside the init function change, uh, uh, change the properties of the arguments in exactly the same way as you can do uh, inside a, a proper CUDF, uh, except that now you can do it in JavaScript, which is a lot safer and a lot uh, more friendly. Okay. Now, 
I said that the, uh, so this is metadata of arguments, right? Um, the actual values of the arguments are being passed to the UDF callback as a convenience. Because in many uh, cases, uh, you only need the metadata inside the init function to validate stuff. And inside the UDF, that does the actual work, you are only interested in the values that are being passed for that particular row at that time. So this example here is similar, at least it looks similar to the previous one. Um, but it just shows you that in this particular case, I'm doing again this verify, but I'm just using arguments, uh, not default arguments. And in this particular case, JavaScript has a built-in uh, inside the whole arguments, inside each function. So inside each JavaScript function that's plainly referring to arguments, refers to the arguments being passed to this function right here. So if I'm running with, with the same arguments again, then now we will get only simply an array of values, right? So this is, and you can actually use, um, 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 you can actually refer to the arguments by name to uh, last example we'll show you that. So, I said it already, the, um, the, these arguments over here, are the values of them are being passed to the UDF callback themselves too. So you can also refer to the arguments by name. And depends on, you know, sometimes you have a function which takes a variable number of arguments. In that case, you will need to pry them off the arguments array. But if you don't need that, if your argument list is fixed, you can simply use them by name and work with them that way. So if I run this again, and again we see that we um, um, get the values that are going to pass to our media uh, okay. okay, now on to um, the JS hack uh, here. Um, <coughs> JS hack is uh, the JavaScript mapping of the aggregate function in case. And you can use this uh, for, 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 for two libraries where you can uh, bunch up a whole number of rows and calculate some statistic called value out of it um, and return one value for this entire group of rows. Um, it works uh, slightly similar, but a little bit different uh, um, uh, as the UDF, JSCDF function. Uh, first you get again an init, call to init. Then you get a call to clear uh, before processing one group of rows. Um, and then for each row in that group, the UDF call that will be called. Finally, when the group is done, the add function will be called, and this will return the value back to MySQL, uh, and will uh, end up in the result. And then finally, at the end, the will be called. So here's the flow diagram for that. So first init, then for each uh, group, one call to clear, then the call to UDF for as many rows as there are, and then finally, when the group is exhausted, one call to add. If there are more groups, we, uh, the cycle will, you know, will run again. If there are no more groups, then we'll get a D in it and ends. And you can use this, um, <coughs> for example, to uh, generate JSON documents out of your data. So here's a here's a simple example. Uh, I'm using JS hack. I'm, I'm again doing some walking just to show you uh, the, 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 the flow and to, to walk the flow. Uh, but the work that's being done here is uh, first we uh, we set up a couple of global variables. Uh, we, we rename uh, arguments to parts because it's uh, less likely, um, and we store the argument count. Uh, and then uh, in clear function for each group, we define a new empty array uh, to hold the rows. And then uh, for each row in the group, we will uh, uh, loop through the argument, <coughs> we will get the name of the argument, and we will use that. Uh, we also created a row object, and we're using the name. Uh, and the value to create uh, main value pairs in this row object. And then we will store that row object into the rows array, uh, rows array that we uh, um, initialized here. And then finally, in the add function, we do a simplify <coughs> of this rows array so that we get uh, one row back, uh, which contains a JSON document uh, for all the rows in this group. And in this case, we do it for films, grouping by rating. So this variable will return one row for each distinct rating, and it will, uh, and each of those rows will be a collection of uh, uh, film documents, right? So if I just run this right now. 
So you can see, well, first you can see there's five rows because there's five ratings in there. And if you look at how one row looks, so you can see that, um, so we're now at the last row, you can see that the array of rows ends here, and for each uh, film row, we created a little document, and it, you know, it was able to extract the names of the columns directly, we didn't have to specify anything, and we just use the arguments, we just use the metadata to uh, automatically ge generate the right document for each, uh, each row. Uh, you can also see that um, uh, we, we got the title information right, so a film ID is an integer, represented as a JavaScript integer, a title as a string, and so on and so forth. Um, of course, this is a, maybe a, an atypical example because we're using the aggregate function to generate strings of text in JSON documents. Uh, you could also use it obviously for correlation, median, uh, all the statistical functions that MySQL doesn't have. You can now create those uh, as a JavaScript uh, function. And it, it, this is also maybe another uh, good use case for the JavaScript stuff. You can use it to prototype really quickly some statistical operation that you want to do. And then afterwards, when you're happy with it, uh, you know, use the JavaScript code and recode it in C. So just as a proof of concept, it's, it's a very useful tool because uh, the JavaScript stuff uh, won't crash your server if you make a mistake, uh, whereas the C stuff will probably. Okay. Um, let me see. R. Um, yeah, so now a little bit about the JavaScript. I'm not sure what my time is. Can I start with your time? Close to the end. Okay. Okay, so a quick word about the JavaScript environment. Um, you have uh, inside JavaScript uh, a bunch of standard uh, constructors uh, for date, uh, rec very powerful regular expressions, uh, string, a number, and so on and so forth. Uh, and you get it for free because it's JavaScript. Then there's a couple of uh, static objects, JSON and Mark, which are also quite, if I do so, especially the JSON one. And you get these for free because V8 uh, you know, offers a standard JavaScript implementation. And these are all standard, so you, you get those uh, as well as a bunch of uh, you know, useful functions. Then uh, there are a couple of globals that are provided by the quality. We already saw the argument area uh, and uh, some of the UDF interface variables and constants. Um, uh, and on top of that, uh, there is a required function. You can use this to uh, load the script file, which should be in your know, uh, plugin uh, module path, uh, and load uh, you know, the script file that was made in advance. So if you have an actual stored procedure, right? Because it's stored in the file, then you can use that over and over again without time to script all the time. You have a console object, which you can use to write the error log. And there's a MySQL object. Um, what I did is, it's a little bit experimental at this point, but inside um, your, uh, uh, your JavaScript, you can open a connection to MySQL. So you can run SQL inside your SQL statement from, from JavaScript. Right? Um, there's the wiki on the project page uh, uh, has documentation for this thing, so you can figure out how it works exactly there. Uh, uh, yeah, quick word about the require. It uses a uh, common data module. Well, it's inspired by the common data module loading paradigm. Um, uh, well, just load a script, execute it, uh, reuse code. Uh, let me just see how that works. Um, so. We just saw the uh, JSON uh, export example. Here's the same example, but using require. So using a predefined uh, script already. So you can see that the code is now considerably cleaned up because we're just using, so the only script that we're using now is require. And by this script, we'll actually hook up all the callbacks and make sure that they, they are in place uh, um, to be called when the rest of the UDF uh, executes. Um, so we can we can now run this and we get the uh, you know, the same the same uh, result, a bunch of documents, but in a, in a cleaner, nicer way. Uh, okay. So um, I'll I'll just do the last slide of the MySQL uh, object model. Uh, so you have a MySQL client object, and there you can get a connection, and there you can create a query, and from the query you can get a result set, and you can iterate through that and uh, do stuff with that. Um, it, it, it's a real client, so you can connect to any MySQL server in the world. So you can use this to uh, push data around. And uh, it's not very fast. Uh, I'm still looking for uh, uh, ways to optimize this. 
but uh, it can be useful if you really need it. Um, I think I should uh, stop now. Thank you.